Hey everyone, this is Justin from Level Up Lunch. In episode 7, we talked about how Java 8 has simplified sorting and removed some of the complexities while using Lambda expressions. If you haven't adopted Java 8 yet, which I imagine many of you haven't, Guava provides this powerhouse class called ordering. And ordering is just this fluent way or fluent comparator class that allows you to build uh, complex kind of ways to order and massage your, your collections. So in this episode, we're going to talk about you know, a, a series of those examples and then show off some of the common uses for the ordering class. If you haven't uh, used Fluent Iterable before, um, it's very similar in nature, but uh, instead of Fluent Iterable working directly with uh, collections and iterables, you're actually using Fluent Comparator class. One of the neat things they've done with this is if you drill into the ordering class, and we're on the Ordering Explains page uh, on the Guava Libraries homepage, is they actually implement comparator. So for some backwards compatibility things, um, and you know, you know, they implement comparator so you can use this pretty much anywhere you want. And you'll see that if you already have an existing comparator and you want to kind of use this ordering class, there's a construct that you can actually do that. So if you're an architect that gets a little bit cautious about introducing a new class or library, um, you know, this conforms to, to going from using ordering or using a comparator. For our first series of examples, we're going to create a list of numbers and populate that list with some random values. The snippet, uh, the first snippet will be ordering in the natural order. So we're going to create an ordering object um, in dot natural, which would be order these values in the natural order of, of the values that we're going to show. So for numbers, it will be least to greatest. Um, the greatest values and we will run that and we'll see that it actually prints them out from lowest to highest. Um, and you're like, well, why, I can do the same thing if I remove this, but our next example or our next snippet will show if we do ordering.natural.reversed, it will create a comparator in the reversed order, which we will have from the highest to lowest or the, the, um, the greatest to least. So those you know, you can chain these value things together and it'll be, it's very natural way to create comparators um, and pass to collections.sort. Next is the min and max. So if I want to find the maximum value or the minimum value in a collection, um, I can just say ordering.natural.max and that will return the greatest value um, in that collection. Same thing with the min, I can call ordering.natural.min and that will return the least value in the collection. If we were to run this, you will see it prints out uh, eight and two. And to save us some time, I will just, uh, you can just assume or pull down the source code and, and be able to run this. Um, the next little snippet we're gonna look at is by length. So if we created a comparator by length, we can, uh, you know, this comparator, if you ran through it, will sort by uh, you, you know, the, the length of the actual string that we're going to pass it. So we created a new list of strings, and uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll say ordering.from, and this will actually, you'll be able to consume an existing comparator, so you're able to pass a compare to the ordering, and ordering knows, hey, I'm going to start from this comparator, and then I want to reverse it. So it says, okay, I want to do by length, but I want length in reverse. So I want the, the longest string first and the, the, the shortest string last. So again, using collections.sort, we'll pass it that list, and then um, that comparator uh, reversed by length, a comparator of strings. And then if we were to print this out, we can do, uh, you'll see that level up lunch welcome in two, which would be the greatest to least strings. So you're able to sort those strings um, from greatest to least. Now one really interesting and, and neat thing that um, ordering has is it you're able to actually check if a collection is ordered by calling ordering.from and we'll say reverse length so we'll pass that comparator in there and we'll say is this collection ordered um, you know in in that specified length. So if you're writing a lot of unit tests around comparators um, this is an easy way to write test and validate that your comparators are working. Um, the next snippet we'll look at is uh, sorting and putting nulls in the position, you know, a position. 
So this has nulls.last. So you can um, kind of daisy chain these things together. So we'll start by length, and then you can do nulls dot or nulls first or nulls last, and specify where you want the nulls to be positioned. So if we were to print this out, let's go ahead and um, we can we can print this out by just saying uh, just nulls dot last dot. Here, let's copy this here. And let's just do, and then we'll do sorted copy of this random value. And we'll, let's just print this out quick. Oops, we got rid of our O there. And just for Oops, we want ordering. And let's go ahead and run this and you'll see that it, what the kind of the raw effect would be. Okay, so we told it, hey, put all the nulls last in our collection, which it did. So it first, um, it first put the nulls last and then it also sorted them by the length. So you'll see the least to greatest in the, the string length and then it put all the nulls last. So if we wanted the first two, um, the first two items in the list, we can comment that out and then um, call the least of, or there's also the greatest of. So give me the greatest values, and in this case, it would return nulls because we ordered it nulls last. We can print out the first two items of of the actual sorted collection. So in this instance, it'll be two welcome and we wanted to capture those first two values. If we specified three, we would get all of them, uh, all the values there. So while we just scratch the surface of ordering, this kind of gives you a, you know, a very high level look at what ordering can provide and how you can you know, chain multiple events in the ordering process or sorting process uh, for collections. Thanks for joining in today's Level Up Lunch.